Topbird Talk. Hello and welcome to EPOM 2018, celebrating 20 years of evidence-based perioperative medicine here in London. I'm Geoff Lacey and I'm very pleased to be joined today by John Whittle and Sam Bampo. John is a born, bred and trained anaesthetist and perioperative medicine physician, uh, but is now assistant professor at Duke University Medical School in North Carolina in the States. And Sam is a consultant anaesthetist at UCH in London and research lead for the UCL uh, master's program in perioperative medicine. Guys, thanks very much for joining. You're also co-founders of Tripom. What is Tripom? So... uh Thanks for having us, Geoff. Better. So TRIPOM is a collaborative. It's trainee-led. TRIPOM stands for trainees with an interest in perioperative medicine. A couple of years ago, Sam and I were doing our perioperative medicine fellowships at UCLH and realised that, you know, there are loads of great resources out there for uh, perioperative medicine, such as EBPOM, the meeting we're at at the moment, but not necessarily so much specifically aimed at trainees. So we set out to set up a collaborative producing free open access medical education. We wanted a strong social media presence and a web presence in order to allow conversation between trainees uh, around the world about perioperative medicine and also signpost resources in that area to help give trainees a voice in the area. And so how does it work, Sam, if you're a trainee in anaesthesia or or any specialty, really, listening now? What's the process involved in in getting involved? So all of our materials are free to access through our website, which is www.tripom.org. And really that came about, as John said, because um, we were fellows in 2015. And in the summer of 2016, the college released its perioperative medicine curriculum. And as John alluded to, You know, there are some great resources out there, the Perioperative Medicine Masters Programme, conferences like this, EBPOM, but there weren't very many free to access, easily accessible resources for trainees, particularly trainees looking at learning about those curriculum items, those new curriculum items. So really, one of our our central ethos, well, our central ethos has been that this needs to be free to access for trainees. So if you go onto our website, there are monthly tutorials. Um, We publish tutorials in the British Journal of Hospital Medicine bi-monthly. And these are all trainee-led, trainee-written resources. So it's really fostering that sense of community. We want our trainees to engage with us and to feel like they're contributing something to part of that community. And Ultimately, if trainees come to our site, they like what they um, what, like what they see, they like the materials, then they can join us. And if they join us on the website, then they access lots of perks, for example, discounts at perioperative medicine conferences like EBPOM. So there are a number of ways that trainees can interact with us, but all is essentially to foster a community, an educational community amongst you know, doctors in training, cross-specialty doctors in training as well, not just anaesthetists. You know. and, that, and that's an important, isn't it? Because it's tripom trainees with an interest. It's not anaesthetic trainees or, you know, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a multidisciplinary, as perioptive medicine is. Exactly. You know, perioptive perioptive medicine is exactly that. It's, it has to be multidisciplinary. And really, if we're training the next generation of perioptive physicians, that has to be embedded. That has to be a fundamental core principle of perioperative medicine and that's reflected throughout our organization we have <clears throat> um, you know an anesthetic lead on our core committee a medical lead surgical lead um, you know we have regional leads throughout the country um, and they're not just anesthetic so our aim is for every region of the country to have a medical lead a surgical lead and an anesthetic lead we're making really good progress towards that our resources on our website, our tutorials are written by medics, they're written by surgeons, they're written by anaesthetists. And, you know, we really want to make sure that that is a core message of TRIPOM is that, you know, we're, we're open to all specialties and we have to be open to all specialties to, to ensure that the perioptive physicians of the future are practicing in that multidisciplinary way that we know is so effective. And, and John, this is this is not just a UK-based organisation, is it? This this is you know across the globe now. You've got kind of break-off organisations in the US, New Zealand, Australia. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So then we don't, don't like to think of them as break-off. Um, <laughs> so the um, so Tripom 
uh, because we are, uh, apart from our presence, at physical presence at meetings, are, are largely uh, web and uh, journal based. That means that uh, wherever you are in the world, you can access our materials. Though, of course, we recognise that various countries, various regions of the world have done really exciting work in perioperative medicine, uh, in their own specific health systems um, that we feel should be shared. So we uh, are developing Tripom USA. Uh, we have Tripom Australia and New Zealand coming online. We have uh, uh, an Asia uh, representative as well. And, you know, we're still pretty young in terms of our international reach, though, uh, one of the drivers for um, developing uh, you know, regional committees was because we noticed that our membership inquiries were coming from around the world and we really want to be able to um, allow trainees around the world to collaborate and join the community and feel uh, part of this. Um, so yes, we are now a global community. Exactly. Um, and and Back on to the, the, the multidisciplinary uh, aspect to the specialty, but also TRIPOM, is that reflected also in your membership? Do you know you know, where your members come from in terms of their, their base? Yes, members are probably predominantly anaesthetic mm-hmm. trainees currently, but that's because I think the whole perioperative medicine world is probably currently making greater strides within the anaesthetic community us being probably naive to this a few years ago you know I think we're all waking up in the anaesthetic community that we can influence outcomes beyond the operating theatre so currently most of our interest comes from the anaesthetic community I think that's also because it's so strongly reflected within our curriculum Mm. now but we do have a good number of surgical trainees and medical trainees as part of our membership and interestingly as well it's not just trainees who who sign up to join Tripom we have uh, not unreasonable number of consultants from around the world, surgeons, anaesthetists, who contact us and say, you know, can we join? We like what we see on your website. Can we can we join and be part of this? So, you know, we're really attractive to, to all doctors, not even just doc- doctors in training, all doctors who are interested in perioperative medicine, which is great, you know. So uh, you've explained how uh, Tripom acts as this, this collaborative, you know, facilitating educational and training aspects of perioperative medicine. I'm a member and I'm well aware of how great the setup is at the moment, but what's your, your vision for where this may go or anything else you're wanting to develop in particular for the future? Right. We started simple. So we started with wanting to produce a re- regular output, which we will continue. So these uh, pom-toms, which are perioperative tutorials of the month, um, and these uh, perioperative medicine in a nutshell articles. As we've discussed before, the primary goal is for it to be trainee generated. So one of the things that we noticed was or, or observed during our training, so as you know very well, Joff, in the UK, you rotate through quite a few hospitals during your training. And in each hospital, you you may spend quite a lot of time producing a journal club, you might produce a presentation to the department, do a little bit of local audit or research, and it almost never really leaves that department. And we felt there were lessons to be shared there. There was a lot of energy and effort gone into that. So one of the things we'd like to promote is just that. So uh, members in uh, hospitals around the country, around the world, who are doing local research, that they feel that we could learn or educational uh, efforts that they feel we could learn from globally, then sharing that with us. Um, we have aspirations to start producing some Tripom podcasts of us of our own, and there are some in the pipeline. We have a aspiration for a perioperative Wikipedia-style page, a periwiki uh, page, which is currently in development uh, in the US. But really, what we mostly want is people like you, Joff, and other members to to bring to us the energy and enthusiasm that we know trainees have. We often feel that trainees are labelled that trainee and the effort, the education, the level of engagement that these doctors have can be lost a little bit and we really want to just foster that because we're all consultants, attendings, professors of the future and it really starts in training. I'd just like to to second that, you know, um, and one of the things that I really think we're really trying to focus on is building that community as John alluded to because there are lots of trainees or doctors in training um, doing fellowships in perioperative medicine and what we want to do is bring all of those people 
who are doing those fellowships together because there these the, the fellowships are becoming more and more common but they're still reasonably few and far between and actually if you look at the work that fellows are doing in each of those roles it's usually a bit different you know they're they're, they're, they're doing different or they're focusing on different aspects of perioperative medicine and without the community to be able to share their experiences essentially these fellowships with these fellows are practicing in silos separately we think there's an opportunity here to really bring together a community of of trainees who will as john said be the perioptive physicians of the future so guys we have to leave it there because we've run out of time but thank you very much for your time tripom's a fabulous initiative uh, and a great success and i hope it continues to be in the future you can catch top med talk further on facebook and twitter and on the website topmedtalk.com and you can also continue to listen to the live feeds from EPOM 2018, including a Tripom special. But that's it from us for now. Thank you for listening. Top Med Talk. Nick McGerrison here. Don't forget you can meet the Top Med Talk team. All you need to do is turn up at one of our events. Check out ebpom.org for more details. Ebpom.org.